All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line with the Buffalo Bills. Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field of the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. On second down, here's Miller. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now Watson. Flushed out right, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The sack there by Trent Murphy. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. 51 yards on the punt Let's there. Go, and the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. As Buffalo comes back out here, Charles, I just want to give some love to the job that Sean McDermott has done. And yeah, you got to give the players credit too, but a double digit win season. First season of at least 10 wins this year for Buffalo since 1999. And think about McDermott now. He's been to the playoffs two or three seasons since the year 2000 with seven previous coaches before McDermott zero playoff appearances and this is a proud franchise a community that loves their team and the players carry a lot of pride with them into the future because I've seen all over social media former Bills so excited to see how this team is playing coming out of the woodwork to let the world know hey we're all about the Buffalo Bills you're exactly right what Shell McDermott has done there in a short amount of time Really, really impressive. And they're also a team that's built to scare the heck out of people in the playoffs. Excellent on defense, a quarterback who can throw it downfield in Josh Allen. And boy, when he breaks contain running it, wreaks havoc on defenses. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. And the Texans say they have it, they do. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, Watson throwing middle, but it's incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. And that'll bring up second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Watson hands to Miller on the draw. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. After the penalty, it's Miller. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On second down, it's Miller. And able to work his way down to the 16. 
And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 16. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Watson on third down. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the right hash, this from 33. Now the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. But clearly that was a design play. I just don't know that it was the right design. I mean, your holder to have him pick it up and kind of be the power guy trying to run through the middle. Everything has to go right for that to work. You mean you weren't relying on just great blocking to get him through? You kind of think maybe he can help make his own way if he's an actual running back yeah. instead of the holder? Yeah, I thought the same thing. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. 41, ground 80! I got you, I got you, son. I got you, you're almost. Now on second down, this is Gore. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs, and let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Check, 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 41. Check right, check right. Allen looks to throw on third and one. Steps away. He may try and run for this. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first Let's down. Go, Josh it. Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now, first and 15 following the delay of game. And now they'll throw with Allen. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down now, Gore. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Throwing his Allen on third. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. 
Charles, as the Texans get the ball back here, I want to discuss their season. It's been kind of some good, some really good, and then some bad and questionable. But under Bill O'Brien, he's in his sixth year. They've had nine or more wins five times now because they've reached that plateau this year. Is this team one, though, that can make a run in the playoffs, or is it just going to be another exit in the playoffs? Well, the problem that they run into is oftentimes they win their division, but they're the fourth division winner, which yeah. means what? They got a wild go card. Yeah. So they tend to host a wild card game, play in that. Most of the time they get beat, right? They did have that big win against Oakland a couple of years ago, but that was the year Derek Carr broke his leg, couldn't play. Then the backup gets hurt and ended up starting Connor Cook, a rookie, his first snaps in the NFL. So that was almost a layup. They've got to find a way to get out of that wild card game. And I'm not sure this is the year if they find a way to win the AFC South. I think they'll still be in the wild card game in 2019. Yeah, because Bill O'Brien's only taken them to the divisional round once and they lost that game. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles and when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day and now we're going to get a delay of game and that's going to back him up halfway he didn't seem in a rush i guess they just didn't know where the play clock was i think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there right no up tempo at all Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. It's complete to Hopkins. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. To return is Roberts. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. A good pickup of six there on first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Mike 41. Let's go, heavy. Let's go, heavy. What you got? What you got, heavy? What you got, heavy? From the 45 on second down, Allen, he'll buy some time right, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. So the shotgun snap to Allen, and the grab by Croft. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. It's caught, Smith. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Throwing again on second down. Allen, he's got Smith here. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. 
Allen now on third and goal. Rolling to his right. He can... And he will score! Touchdown, Buffalo! A six-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Down, it's Watson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And now it's second down. CD, with that incompletion, let's talk AFC playoff picture. I think you and I agree that if you put together any sort of power rankings, we'd put Baltimore number one, certainly in the AFC. But you look ahead to the playoffs getting started on January 4th. Who do you see as their main competitor for that Lamar Hunt trophy? Well, tradition and us not wanting to be wrong dictates that we say New England next, and rightly so because of the number of Lombardi trophies they've won, how they've always played at this time of year. But the bottom line to me is the prime contenders right now for Baltimore, Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes has got it together and the defense is playing better. And Buffalo really showed me something when they beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night in week 15. Stepping up, he'll try and run. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now it's Watson. A bootleg. 
sliding out of the pocket. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. And he's going to work this one down to about the 5. He'll pick up 7 there on the first down keeper. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. That's going to set him back five yards. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. The Texans on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Watson. He may try and run for this. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Fairbear is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Yeah, and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. The Bills on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time, it's third and three. To the air, Allen. And that's complete to Croft. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. 
It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Throwing on first down is Allen. Got a man, it's Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Switch. Switch. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, it's Allen. He wants it all for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Tashad Gibson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. After the interception, here's Watson. And this one complete to Will Fuller. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And all the way down to the 41-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set fifth defensive back on the field and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender yeah because those dbs like you they want the interception they're not as worried about the running play right not at all and I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say boy i love to come downfield hit you little people good run there he'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running so it'll leave him with second and a yard Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So a jump there defensively. That's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. 10th carry now for Lamar Miller. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. I got him, I got him. <laughs> Watson with a give to Miller. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. I know you feel Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun on third, Watson. And he finds Stills, complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Set. 19, 58, the mic. I'm here all 
A first down carry now for Miller. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He'll grab three yards on the play, taking it himself for the first down. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go, fellas. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? From the gun, here's Watson. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement, and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? Second and goal from inside the five. Following the penalty, it's high. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Texans have taken the lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the lead is now 10-7. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it second and 12. Now the Bills will hustle to the line. On second and 12, Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. But now it'll be third down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Allen now looks to throw on the move. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Well, the Bills send the punter out as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away.
It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And now out comes Houston. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan, finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways. But right now, you got to like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. First and ten, Watson. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker, able to break that one up. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Throwing again is Watson. He completes this into the hands of Miller. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll lead here to a third down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch, just one yard, making it third and nine. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, go. just shy of the 20. Here we go. That one goes for 24 yards. The Let's Texans go. going to signal go. for Let's their go. third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 38. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. And we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start Let's at the 32-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. A final shot before half for Allen. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Jaleel Adai. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. 
So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports halftime report. Take it away, Coach. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. And they always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. On third and long, it's Allen escaping the pressure right. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. The Bills send the punter out as he's on here to punt it away. So a change of possession here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Again, it's Johnson. And down he goes just beyond the 35, and that pretty move got him some extra space to run. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. First down, a run with Hyde. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They'll try the air now with Watson. And a catch made by Hopkins. 
And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 40. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. They'll run on first down. Miller, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Let's see what you got. Check. On second and 11 now. Watch it. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. A shotgun snap for Watson. Finding fouls complete. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 16. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well He's there. Perfectly right executed right. crossing right. route. Got you. I got you, son. <laughs> From the red zone now, Watson, screen play, Johnson. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Lamar Miller. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Texans push further out in front. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, if something got, there's going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, 
They have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He gets it to Brown, complete. 10 yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when they when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. On first down, it's score. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare Here's afternoon the continues. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle Mike, Mike. and run off a bunch more plays. Mike. I got <laughs> on second and seven, Allen over the middle, and it's incomplete. Robert Foster, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game's slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. On play action, Allen. And the grab by Croft. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Allen now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Allen's throw is complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 14 yards and the Bills will get a new set of downs. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run as his guys are back within a single score. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Hauschka with the extra point, and they're back with it, a touchdown at 21-14.
Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Texans set to come onto the field. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Five. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Before they can snap it, time runs out on this third quarter of play. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Throwing on second down. Watson, he's letting this one go for Fuller. This is caught inside the 15. And he is down deep into Buffalo territory. Watson hitting Fuller with a big one. 56 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use momentum to launch another one. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. And Brandon, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise. This close to the goal line? Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Here's Watson. And he's got it. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. A five-yard touchdown. And the Texans push further out in front. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point by Fairbairn. Up and good. And the lead now up to 14. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Allen now on first down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. 
throwing now is Allen. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. Allen going to throw. Short throw hauled in by Croft. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards, good enough for a Buffalo first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. So that'll back him up five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. And again, it's Allen. An incomplete crisis averted, almost picked. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Allen to throw once more. Open man, here's Foster. The reception good for seven. It's third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Bills on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and eight. To throw, it's Allen. Short throw hauled in by Croft. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. It was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about. But I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this. You have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's who you're looking for. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Miller will get it. He has been busy today. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson, and he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. 
Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. On the counter, it's Miller. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and ten. Out of the gun, Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Back-to-back go -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. The strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On second and goal, Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Star Latulale in there to drop him for a loss on the play. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. They come out here in the eye. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? They'll run for it with Hyde. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Texans touchdown. Carlos Hyde, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans push further out in front. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Allen will try again on second down. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now 
Allen from the gun on third down. And that will be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion, and they're just a little over 100 yards passing here in this game, so defensively, pretty good job. Definitely, because they were never really able to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. So a lot of credit to the defensive game plan and especially the execution. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Allen, and it is incomplete. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Now a play fake here on first down. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Trent Murphy able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Another try after the first down sack. Watson, and he's going to go down again. Matt Milano picks up his second sack of the afternoon. So, Brandon, we've sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Following the sack, it's now third and long for Watson and the Texans. Play action from Miller. Now Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. They get a big amount back, 18 yards, but they'll still look at a fourth down now. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened there. you think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Right there. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. 
The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Now a 20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Here we go. Here we go. Ten yards there, good enough go. for a Texan first down. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. A good pickup of six there on first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Mike, 58, right there. I got it, I got it. Chad, 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 let's go. On second down, Johnson. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Six let's yards to pick let's up, go. and that's a first down. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start, but boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And they were booing Charles by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime, obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.